Hello everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. This is Entrepreneurs of Faith, a Sunday episode of Monetization Nation, and I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host. Creating and running businesses isn't easy. However, being the spouse of an entrepreneur or CEO isn't easy either. One of the primary reasons we create our businesses is so we can have the time and resources for the things and people that matter most. This especially includes our spouse, the person who should matter the most to us. We need to be sure we don't let the stress of business and work be an excuse for not sharing our love and being there for our loved ones on this Valentine's Day and the rest of the year. There's nothing we're working on at work that's more important than the people we love. But unfortunately, approximately 50% of marriages end in divorce. So in today's episode, we're going to discuss 11 of the most successful strategies entrepreneurs and CEOs use to destroy their marriages and some alternative strategies for those of us who are trying to nurture more loving and connected marriages. Strategy number one, don't invest time to reconnect daily. Henry Beecher, a minister said, every successful marriage is the result of two people working diligently and skillfully to cultivate their love. Sometimes, unfortunately, entrepreneurs and CEOs like myself don't prioritize daily connection with their spouse sufficiently. Instead of making this mistake, maybe we can schedule opportunities for daily connection. Some ideas might be a regular date night, regular walks together, or lunch dates together if possible. If we're traveling or away from home, we can schedule reminders to send regular texts or to make regular video calls. Marriage is a daily decision that we must invest in every day. Sometimes couples quit dating each other. Don't ever quit dating. Dating and regular connection is probably how you and your spouse fell in love initially and something we need to keep doing to continue nurturing a loving marriage. One of the business tectonic shifts we talk about a lot at Monetization Nation is connecting through passion. This doesn't just work in business, but it can also be very effective in our relationships. We should try to identify our spouse's level 10 passions and strive to connect with our spouse through what he or she is crazy passionate about. As an example, one study found that couples who watch romantic movies and discuss the relationships in them afterward have a 50% lower divorce rate. Sorry guys, just watch the romantic movies with her. Strategy number two is outsourcing the sacred parts of the marriage. As entrepreneurs, we often learn the importance of outsourcing in order to get everything done. However, some of us make the mistake of outsourcing parts of our marriage. Sometimes couples outsource sacred elements of the marriage, such as emotional connection, companionship, and sometimes even sex, to people other than their spouse. Sometimes people outsource to porn and romance novels. When this happens, the spouse is escaping and finding fulfillment with other people and things. A study at the University of Oklahoma found that the chances of divorce double when pornography is viewed. Dr. John Gottman, a world-renowned therapist who has 40 years of experience studying relationships, explains in an open and honest letter that pornography should never be viewed because of the unrealistic expectations it creates. Men and women who find fulfillment through explicit images and videos almost always find they have trouble finding fulfillment with the actual partner. Dr. Gottman states that even non-compulsive use of pornographic images can damage a committed relationship. In a similar manner, romance novels can have a similar effect. These books are full of unrealistic people, relationships, and sexual experiences. When a spouse gets too caught up in romance novels, they begin to believe that their partner should be more like the character in the novel. They can also begin to turn to these novels for feelings of romance, love, and desire instead of their spouse, which decreases their connection. We should be committed to nurture those sacred parts of our marriages only with our spouse. This commitment will help ensure that we keep our marriages strong and our intimate sacred moments special and wonderful. Strategy number three is focusing on digital devices and entertainment instead of our spouse. When was the last time we checked our phone while our spouses were trying to talk to us? A recent study found that mobile phones can have a negative impact on closeness, connection, and quality of conversation in human relationships. Do we neglect our spouse because we spend too much time glued to digital entertainment, such as TV, social media, or video games? I recently spoke with a church leader who told me video game addiction 
is one of the top reasons couples in this congregation are getting divorced. Instead, maybe we commit to ourselves to put our phones away when we're having meals with or talking to our spouse. If the phone rings or we receive a text and our spouse encourages us to take the call or check the text, maybe we can just say, I'm sure it's not as important as you. Instead of watching too much TV or playing too many video games, maybe we make a commitment to ourselves that we only consume digital entertainment after we've made a meaningful connection that day with our spouse. This habit might help us to put first things first, as Stephen Covey taught us. Strategy number four is to not be responsible with money. Fights about money are the second leading cause of divorce right behind infidelity. Many couples don't have a budget or don't stick to it if they do. My wife is so much better at this than I am. Some couples unfortunately buy the biggest house the bank will let them buy and drive the nicest cars they can. One study from researchers at Brigham Young University found that married individuals with higher levels of materialism had less satisfying marriages. Some couples keep their finances separate and don't communicate with their spouses about financial issues. Money issues are cited as a cause of 36% of divorces. If you haven't before, I would highly recommend you taking a financial course with your spouse. My wife and I took the Dave Ramsey course and it helped a lot. A good financial course forces spouses to talk through and come to a consensus on important financial decisions. For example, do you and your spouse both know what your next big purchase will be and how fast you're saving to earn it? What do you picture for your future retirement and how much money do you need to be putting away now to achieve that? Are you both comfortable with how much money is being spent every month versus how much is being put away for future plans? Having these discussions and learning about financials together can help avoid money problems and create open and honest communication about our financials. Strategy number five that entrepreneurs use to successfully destroy marriages is don't make intimacy a priority. Dr. Ian Kerner, a counselor, said, when couples stop having sex, their relationships become vulnerable to anger, detachment, infidelity, and ultimately divorce. Unfortunately, sometimes spouses don't make regular sex and intimacy a priority. Sometimes touch is eliminated outside of sex. Regular sex and other intimacy can be a powerful glue that binds together spouses with a stronger connection. For many people, touch is their primary love language. For most couples, touch and sex can be a powerful way to reconnect and communicate love. Relationship expert Dr. Lurv believes that one of the most essential ingredients to any long-lasting marriage is daily hugs. She prescribes a 10-second hug every day to her clients who are struggling to reconnect with their spouses. This daily hug releases oxytocin, promotes sexual desire, helps us resolve issues more quickly, and can alleviate stress. The sixth strategy to successfully destroy marriages is to have intimate opposite sex friendships. Frank Schubert, a famous composer said, happy is the man who finds a true friend and far happier is he who finds that true friend is his wife. Sometimes we don't recognize that emotional relationships with someone of the opposite sex can be deadly to our marriages. These relationships often start innocently as just lunch or advice or lending a listening ear. These relationships can sometimes lead to emotional intimacy. Our spouses should be the first person to which we turn to to share our joys and our sorrows. When we have our own safeguards in place and don't make justifications to break them, we're much less likely to find ourselves in inappropriate relationships. Keep in mind that most affairs don't begin because someone wanted to cheat. Actually, 80% of affairs began as just friends. The new infidelity is between people who unwittingly form deep, passionate connections before realizing that they've crossed the line from platonic relationships to romantic love, explains Shirley Glass, the author of Not Just Friends. Strategy seven to successfully destroy marriages is don't help out. Joyce Brothers, the psychologist and author, said, Marriage is not just spiritual communion, it is also remembering to take out the trash. Our spouses are probably carrying heavy loads, and so are most entrepreneurs. It's very common for us to focus on our own heavy loads that we're carrying and to be resentful or put out when our spouse asks us to help. Doesn't our spouse realize how busy we are? Instead, 
maybe we identify a job that our spouse most dislikes doing. Maybe it's cleaning toilets, doing dishes, or cleaning up dog poop. If we don't know which tasks our spouse dislikes the most, just ask. Then maybe we proactively start doing that task every day without being asked or saying anything about it. Early in my marriage, a counselor taught me that when my wife asks me to do something, I should look at it as a gift because she's telling me what she needs so I know what I can best do to help her. Strategy eight is pointing out all of your spouse's weaknesses. Dave Willis, a pastor and author said, instead of nagging about your spouse, try bragging about your spouse. When you were dating, how often did you point out the faults of the person you were dating? How often do you do it now? Maybe instead of focusing on his or her faults, we should strive to find everything we love about our spouse and everything we're grateful for and strive to build him or her up with love and gratitude every day. It's especially important that we don't speak badly about our spouses to others. Media is filled with spouses making jokes about each other, such as, I have four kids, three if you don't count my husband. TV shows and movies can make these lines seem innocent enough. But in reality, speaking about our spouses in any kind of derogatory manner will only hurt our marriages. Just as we're aware of our own weaknesses, our spouses are aware of theirs. We're not here to point them out, or even worse, shout them out to our friends and family. We're there to love and support them as they strive to change for the better, just as we'll be doing. Leslie Vernick, a well-known author and speaker, shared that regularly thinking negatively about your spouse increases your dissatisfaction with them and your marriage. The more we focus on things we love about our spouses, the more in love we'll be with them and our marriage. Strategy nine is to make other people a priority over your spouse. Often parents prioritize their children over their spouse. A relationship expert named David Pizarra said, the most frequent issue I hear from men I represent is that the focus of the wife turn to the child and never return to the relationship with the man. Sometimes we allow parents, friends, or a boss to be a higher priority than our spouse. Instead, maybe we need to listen when our spouse says he or she is having an issue with our parents and set better boundaries. Maybe we need to plan for scheduled alone time each day, a scheduled date night each week, and quarterly getaways with our spouse. Maybe we commit that whenever our spouse calls or texts, we do everything we can to immediately take the call or respond to the text so that our spouse can feel they are our priority. We need to make sure that our spouse always comes first. Strategy number 10 is to be harsh or abusive with our spouse. Ianla Van Zant lamented, family is supposed to be our safe haven. Very often, it's the place where we find the deepest heartache. It doesn't matter how bad of a day we're having. There is never an excuse for being harsh or abusive with our spouse. Broken bones heal. When we yell at our spouse, call him or her names, or abuse our spouse in any way, that can take a very long time to heal. Abusing our spouse is never okay. Yelling at our spouse is never okay, unless maybe the house is on fire. Calling our spouse names is never okay. Our spouse should know without a doubt that we will be loyal and never speak badly about them in front of another person. Jonathan Bennett, a relationship expert said, if you're having a fight or are annoyed with your partner, the appropriate course of action is to address it directly. By airing your dirty laundry for everyone to see, you're showing a lack of respect for your partner and the relationship. Strategy 11 is to threaten divorce. Robert Anderson, the playwright said, in every marriage more than a week old, there are grounds for divorce. The trick is to find and continue to find grounds for marriage. Some people threaten divorce to get leverage so that their spouse will make a desired change. However, this threat can often have the opposite effect and create long lasting rifts in the marriage. However, this threat can often have the opposite effect and create long lasting rifts and disconnection in the marriage. When we threaten divorce, that could be the nuclear bomb that destroys everything else around it. In 1519, a Spanish conquistador named Hernán Cortés arrived in the New World with 600 men. Soon after arrival, he burned all of his ships, sending the message to his men that there would be no turning back. 
Within two years, he had conquered the Aztec Empire. Now, I realize there are situations such as serious abuse where divorce may be the right decision. However, if we're not in one of those situations, we should probably burn our ships, commit to improving the marriage, and not threaten divorce as the backup. We should let our spouse know that this may be a really hard situation, but we love them so much that we're willing to do everything we can to work through this. If this episode of Entrepreneurs of Faith resonated with you, please subscribe for free to Monetization Nation so you can receive an episode of Entrepreneurs of Faith each Sunday. You can subscribe to our e-magazine at monetizationnation.com forward slash e-magazine. You can also subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel or subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher. You can also follow Monetization Nation on Instagram or Twitter. What do you feel are the most common things entrepreneurs and CEOs do to destroy their marriages? And what are the solutions? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thank you for watching or listening today. I hope you have a fabulous Valentine's Day.